Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the Uncensored Live Q&A session, the trading talk. My name is Danny and I will give you the webinar today. Okay, so let's just go through the structure and see what is going to happen in our webinar today. Uh, we are going to begin with previous questions that our team has prepared from other common webinars and uh, these previ previous webinars. I, I know that the previous webinars didn't happen. Uh, the live Q&A, the previous versions didn't happen. So we are making today a special uh, webinar with I guess very interesting questions. Okay, we'll get we'll get through that in in a minute. Okay, um, so we have the previous questions, as I said. We have the dynamic questions, which are questions that uh, you guys can ask along the webinar. Okay, we have the this part, this bit here is more of an information slide. You see where I can share with you some things. And lastly, we have analysis. Now, analysis is usually a part that we cover through the questions themselves. So this is why there is no really point using the slide here. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how how uh, complicated the questions will be, and then we'll see if we cover that through the questions, or we'll have to use the slide. Okay. Any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for informative purposes only and should not be constructed or applied is an investment advice or recommendation or a suggestion. Okay, apart from that, I would like to tell you guys that the webinar is recorded, so even if you've missed a part or there are things that you would like to recap in your own free time, you're more than welcome to come to our channel on YouTube. Um, this is where you can find order recorded versions, plus recorded versions from, uh, from other webinars as well. Everything is there. And of course, the content that we have here in the website, perhaps I get a chance to show you some things here. And then uh, all of this is something that you can enjoy. Okay, uh, let's uh, begin, like I said, with the previous questions. Okay, and let's see what we get today. Okay, how much money is needed to open one lot with NASDAQ? Okay, so NASDAQ is among the indices that we have. Let me just show you if I go here. This is the default in, uh, screen. When I log into the website, this is called a web trader. Okay, if you can't see that interface, you can simply send an email to uh, our customer service to assist you with that or your senior account manager, and they can apply it on your account. But typically, it should look this way. Uh, okay, this, this is the web trailer. There are some unique features here. Perhaps we're not gonna begin with that. Let's just focus on the question for the time being. And if we have some spare time, perhaps we can uh, also cover some of the features. Okay, so how much money is needed to open one lot with NASDAQ? Let's first understand what is NASDAQ. Okay, we're gonna click here on the two tiny arrows. We're gonna fold it down. As you can see, there is a toggle here. I can click and drag up and down. Uh, in the indices, what I'm gonna do, there is a thin toggle here. I can cl click and drag it down. And I'm gonna go to the indices and I'm gonna look for US stack 100. Okay, which is here at the bottom. Uh, I showed you the manual way, but to be honest, I could just as much put here NASDAQ. Okay, I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna put NASDAQ. It's gonna show it by itself, yeah. Okay, let's see, one lot, how much money do we need? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on buy. It doesn't really matter to open this interface. Let me just show you again. Okay, sell or buy, I can also switch Later on, I can switch from buy to sell. Uh, and I want to know one lot how much money I need. Now, to know how many indices I have in one lot, I have two ways to check. One is I'm simply going to put here one, and then I'm going to see 100. The other way is 
you see that this tab is also divided to two menus order entry and the instrument details watch what happens when i click on instrument details now i can see the bullish and the bearish okay the market uh sentiment and i can see the bid and the ask okay we always buy the ask and sell it at the bid uh and right i and i can see the times okay and one of the things that i can see right away is the load size okay which is 100 indices uh per lot that means in other in in other uh, words that when i take one lot every dollar nasdaq moves i'm gonna make or lose 100 okay let me just show you we have the spread but uh okay so let's try this demonstration with a thousand let's take the current price don't worry guys i'm going back to the question in a second okay but let's suppose we increase that by 10. okay another 10. all right bring it back to the original price okay now when i take one lot when i acquire 100 units i'm looking at the value here which significantly increased let's do it from scratch okay so naturally when i hold just 0.01 okay okay let's let's leave it as it is for now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put here price per unit which is the price here here and at the red ray now green but okay the price per unit is 19096 and a half we have the quantities which also known as amount lot it's right here to the left side which in our case is just one okay in here we're gonna write down the leverage leverage is 1 to 20. okay and we are going to add here the uh, margin impact okay don't worry i'm gonna do the calculations with you to know how we have got to that okay so here at the bottom i'm gonna write down a couple of equations we have price per unit times units equals value value divided by leverage equals margin impact you can also confirm that by going again to the instrument details and it's going to show me that the required margin for me is five percent five percent of what five percent of the value okay do we understand that bit as you can see here the value is the conclusion between my uh, units to the price okay so if i increase that to 10 this becomes 190 now a million nine hundred okay again if i increase by a hundred okay so that's 100 times 100 again that means 10k okay as you can see now 20k if it would have been just one so it's 200 if i place it back to the original price okay as you can see i have one unit if it goes up by 100 it will be a 100 okay now when I'm looking at what's written here, this is very simple to understand. So this is my price. 
this is how much I need to multiply that to get the value. Of course, you don't have to remember anything that I said because it's already written here, right? <laughs> you guys understood that I didn't do it in my head. I just looked at the numbers here and I, I simply typed it down. But let's let's do something a bit more complex. Uh, let's make it 10. Okay, so we have the, let's actually put that here. This is our first variation. Well, I have another variation right here. So that 10 times more, let's make it this way. Okay, 190. Okay, now it became 10. That means we have moved closer to the decimal. We have, okay, we're multiplying by 20. Let's follow the equation here. Value divided by leverage. And let's see. Okay, so 19980 divided by 20 is 9000. 549. Okay. Now, uh, do we understand that? Is that, are, are there any questions regarding anything that I said? Any questions, guys? was for oh right thank you alexander <laughs> this is actually very very nice i the question was for one lot and i showed you two variations which are not one lot that's just comical okay but but let's let's you know what let's do the other step just realize that it's a nature of habit um you know, okay so i'm gonna change it to one lot again that's really the exact same comparison Really, let me just add here a zero, just so you guys will understand how simple the process is. Just a second, 909. Okay, again, that becomes 100. Thank you, Alexander. Now it's, it's, it's the right, uh, it's correct. It's correct, the question here refers to one lot uh multiplies okay so that becomes ninety five thousand. we're just gonna add here a zero and as you can see super super simple there is nothing special to it um i think we should just move on do we have any more questions about that bit here do you know this is this is if if this if this wasn't clarified so far the margin impact is the necessary amount i'm gonna put it here Margin impact equals necessary amount to acquire to open a position. Yeah, that pretty much concludes everything we we showed so far. This is super simple. Again, this is my quantities. Uh, that's called a lot. Okay, one lot is a measuring unit. Uh, this is the conclusion between my units to the price. Uh, what else? The, okay, so if I divide a value by the leverage the, the same way it's written here, I know how much I need. And again, I'm going to divide it by 20 because I multiply it by 20. Okay, that means as I show that my requirement is 5% of the value. Okay, 5% of the value. This will work the exact same way with any other asset. Uh, you can try and, uh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna take, I think that bit, and this bit, and we're simply gonna blend it into the, not this way. How can we do it without to confuse you guys? because I do want it to be as clear as possible. Let's put it this way. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, that looks pretty understandable. And let's perhaps write it down as well. Yeah, it wouldn't look too bad anyway. If I put it this way, we are good. Obviously, the number will change, numbers will change, but that's just enough to practice. Okay, what are the best, I just love this kind of questions. What are the best times to trade, right? So what's the best time to trade? Who can tell me what is the best times to trade? If there is a thing like that, which perhaps there are special times to trade. When the market just opened or when the market just closed. Oh, very nice, Tariq. Okay, so Tariq is here, here advising us that it might be good to trade when the market is open and when the market is closed. Okay, Tariq. Oh, by the way, why? If you can explain why, what's so special about when the market is open and when, when it's closed? Fluctuations. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. Fluctuations. That's great. Uh, hello. My name is Philip. Very good. Very good. Good to have you with us, Philip. So we understand from Tariq that op when the market is closed and when the market is open. So that means opening, right? And closing times or maybe near opening and closing price okay what else are the best times to trade so this is one right what else low points okay but the question here is what are the best times to trade Okay, so I guess it's not, I guess what the question here is trying to ask us is what occasionally are good times to trade in terms of uh, certain times and not six o'clock or five o'clock or four o'clock, right? So I would probably add here uh, events, okay, before or after as an example. I would also say um, reports, okay, before and after. Okay, what else do you think that could be good? We have the NFP this Friday. That's correct, Kira. Very good, very good. The NFP, the, well, well, who can tell me what is the NFP? Kira, maybe you can enlighten us and tell us what is the NFP? That's correct, the non-farming peril. So this is one of the, it's not really an event, it's more of a report, right? It's more of a report, NFP, okay. Non-farming peril, this is like, uh, Kira, This is, you, you are correct. It's also something that we we can uh, trade before and after and can possibly make the market fluctuate. But this is not something I would say the best time to trade, right? Because every time is the best time to trade. It depends on the strategy. Um, we have a question here from Joe Tonde. Uh, Deep in rally, is it system or traders when they realize an asset? Okay, that's an excellent question. Just a second. Let me paste your question, sir. If I could just take it from the chat. 
sorry guys, this is really giving me every time I try to do that, it's giving me some some hard time to copy your questions. I don't know why. Maybe now, no. Okay, I think I think I made it. Let's see if I can place it at the um, presentation now. Oh, there we go. Now we are uh, we are perfect. Let's just let's keep it. I, I guess let's let's keep it as it is. I don't want to mess it up. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Joe. Okay, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, where was I with the times? Right, so there is no really specific times that I can tell you guys if you'll trade on this and that times, you'll surely make money. That's obviously not how it works, but I can just say that uh, when, when a report when an event when there is something fundamental that takes place sometimes the market can be a little delusive okay and it can move one direction for a little bit and then the correction is much stronger okay it's not a rule it's not something that happens every time but it's a possibility therefore sometimes it's a good idea to let it cool a bit again we don't have to do that. Sometimes we trade right away, we can make a lot of money. This is also an option, okay, for you to have, to consider. Uh, and that's 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 about that. What else I can say about the times? There's no really, there's no really something specific I would say because in reports, I could say we have the quarterly reports, which is more, uh related to you know stocks and and uh public companies events we have the reoccurrences like nfp and the interest rate decisions uh near opening and closing uh market times like Tariq i uh, mentioned this this is also it's also it could be fluctuated times okay sometimes the market even gap those times Okay, we're we're just gonna write that down for the time being because I don't want to delay about it too much. Because again, I don't like to turn the best times to trade. Maybe I can trade at the best time and still my strategy is not the best. So does that mean that I'm gonna make money because it's the best time? I don't know. <laughs> but but it's 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 good to know. It's it's things that are good to know. What is the recommended balance to work with? Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see what that means. What is the recommended balance to work with? This is, uh, that's, that can connect us with the uh, first question, right? What was the first question? How much money is uh, needed to open one lot with NASDAQ? Okay, and then we see here, what is the recommended amount uh, recommended balance to work with okay so what is the recommended balance to work with let's suppose that we hypothetically would have a generic number to work with so let's suppose we have a hundred we have a thousand we have let's say I don't know five thousand ten thousand right I can I can go on but let's just take it another level higher fifty thousand okay what is the difference is uh what am i missing here no that looks good <laughs> we're not gonna end anymore because again we can go like this forever uh what is the recommended balance to work with guys and please write to me the reasons don't just write a hundred or a thousand or five thousand if you have something specific you can write to me the reason below i'd highly appreciate it what do you think 
the recommended balance to to work with. Right now, I have in my demo account uh, ten thousand. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is it too much? Is it too little? What do you think? Let's open Nasdaq for a comparison. So we have a few options. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the required amount to my balance to know how much I'm actually using. In other words, I'm going to go with a buy. And I'm going to bring it back to one lot to see if I can afford this position. Okay, let's see if we still have it. Perhaps I can just pull the numbers from a minute ago. Oh, that's very, very efficient. We are very efficient. Let's see, we have the leverage here. Very good. And the margin. Okay, margin wise, exactly, exactly. Exactly, let's see. So the necessary amount here is 95,000, which frankly, guys, I'm not even near that. Yeah, we all understand I'm 10% off that. Okay, so that means that if I could, uh, let's take that to 0 0.1. Let's suppose, uh, obviously, if, if I would want to take one lot casually, with NASDAQ, I would probably want to have at least 95 if not double than that okay and let's speak about it for a second let's just take that down gonna get rid of that this here we're gonna change it quickly to 10 and that's just perfect okay now is this and i'm telling you that this is enough to open a position, this is enough. Okay, I have ten thousand balance. Balance. But the question here doesn't refer to if I can or I can't. Doesn't refer to if I have the possibility. The question is referring to the recommended. Now I'm asking you guys before I even get down to the numbers and make this comparison. Right now I'm going to use roughly 95% uh, of my balance just to take this position. Okay, by the way, without leverage, I would have needed 190,000. Okay, with the leverage, I only need 9,500. Now taking this puts me in a position when I'm using 100% of my margin, right? Now, well, not 100%, uh, 95%. Now, is this something recommended let's let's use the semantics from our question right is this a recommended would you recommend would you recommend me to do something like that what do you think guys is this something recommended Laura, you wrote you can't take two positions like this. Yeah, of course. I, I can't even take a position and a half, okay, like that, because I don't have enough margin. But from the other side, what else can't I do? Can I take uh, another position with uh, something else? We have a question here from... I think uh, Topi, I don't know, you guys don't have to raise your hand, right? I see people using this function to raise your hand. This is a live Q&A. We have it for you guys. You can just use like Joe, the question section and, and write your question. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> All right, so we understand that by using 95% of my balance to be able to diverse or to be able to sustain the position uh, further, it will be more challenging, right? When I'm on 100% margin, when I'm using 100% margin, and if I'm using a leverage of 1 to 20, okay, let's suppose that I'm under UK regulation, uh, that means that if I go below 50, this position will be closed, right? In other words, the recommended amount for me wouldn't be to use 95% uh, on a single position. 
Okay, we understand that. And then I want to maintain always more than 100% uh, of margin. Okay, always. So that means that if, for instance, I want to take this position comfortably, and this is 9,500 for this margin impact, what should be my necessary balance? What do you think is a good balance to work with when I want to take a position like that? Let's try the other, the other way around. Let's minimize that to, let's minimize that to the minimum, I think. Okay, this will be the easiest to begin with. And then everything shrink down to that. Okay, of course, again, everybody understood that whatever I'm showing you on NASDAQ can be easily applied with anything else. Yeah, we, we understand that. This is just an example. Um, let's do one, sorry, 9.54 and a half. Okay, and now what we're looking at is only that. Okay, which became less than 10%, 9.5%. Okay, 9.54%. Uh, so right now I'm gonna use less than 10% of my account. Is that a recommended comparison? Who think that this is okay? That with 10,000 I can comfortably take a position that costs less than 10%. It's much better. Okay, I'm with you, Kira. So this is much better. What is, why is this much better? Because I could, look, I could, I could take the position, right? There is no problem here. I mean, I could take the position. I have the ability. Why, why is that so bad? Because it doesn't leave me with trading as much, as much as I can make money, guys. I want you also to understand that. As much as I can make money, I can also lose. Okay, and when I'm taking a position act using most of my margin, okay, it doesn't leave me space to stretch and sustain the position, okay, to hold it because I can get a stop out and furthermore, it doesn't allow me to diverse comfortably because I don't have enough margin, additional margin to take maybe another position with, a, I don't know, another indice or a currency or a commodity. I won't be able to do that. Okay, and then if Nasdaq doesn't make money, I'm just gonna lose. I don't have anything else to compensate from the other end, which is the purpose when diversifying. Okay, uh, and this is why I can't really, there is no answer to this question. There is an answer, but it depends on the asset and it depends on the load size and it depends on your, uh, diversification, because if I'm just trading this position, it might be fine, right? I mean, I have one position and I hold it for a month. There is no problem with it. I don't need additional for, uh, margin for that for the time being. But if I trade different things and I don't want to put all my, uh, all my eggs in one basket, so I'm always going to be on the edge. This is why this comparison needs to be between the balance uh, sorry, between, uh, yeah, the balance need to be compared to the amount that I have to use to open the position. And it also needs to be compared with my uh, exposure. Okay, there is something called r and &R, right, which stands for risk reward ratio. And that means that I my balance it, when i design something called risk money management okay when i design my stop loss to be on a certain point i can compare it with, with my balance and know potentially how much it's going to be okay so right now it's eight percent okay because one percent is it's uh ten percent is a thousand right so this is sorry just a second this is compare it quickly less than that right it should have been like that if 
sorry, are we with a buy? Yeah, so that needs to be lower. Just to clarify, guys, when I am uh, when I am uh, buying something, my stop loss my uh, has to be lower. Okay, when I'm buying something, my stop loss has to be lower. This is why I have reduced from the current vi uh, value. I have reduced the price. Okay, we understand that. Okay, now when I uh, when I have ten units and it goes down a hundred, which we can see here, it will result a thousand in a uh, loss. Okay. A thousand out of my balance is now ten percent. Okay, so if it would have been eighty, it would have been less than a percent, right? It's less than a percent. How so? Because if I divide that by a hundred, what will it be? Let's see. Oh, sorry, hundred. Okay, it would be a hundred. Therefore, 80 will be roughly 0.8%. Uh, now, when I'm doing risk money management and I design my uh, possible loss, that always be compared to my balance. So as referenced in this question, the recommended balance, I'm going to compare a couple of things. A, I'm going to choose which asset I'm trading. B, I'm going to choose the typical load size that I'm going to use in my strategy. Uh, C, I'm going to look at my expected exposure, how much I'm willing to lose in every position, and then I can strengthen it all together and come to a conclusion of the recommended balance. Okay, I can safely say that if I have uh, 10,000 in my balance and I'm going to go 0 0.01, I can take this position using less than 10%. I'm okay. Okay, again, that's my personal opinion. Everybody can do what they want. If you want to use 95% of your balance just to take a single position, be my guess. But I'm here to show you, as I said before, different, uh, so you will have a different options if, if you want to, okay? This is uh, as an addition. Okay, so what is the recommended amount? So we are going to, actually, let's, Paste it down. What, what I can do to make it a little easier to also remember all of that is to just a second. When choosing a recommended amount, amount will first think I will think of the instrument. The load size, the amount of positions, diversification, okay, and and what we said about the last thing with the risk money management. How can I say that? I will. I can assess the expected exposure. It sounds a bit complicated, but this is super, super simple. And it says the expected exposure, expected potential exposure in my positions. That's like I said, I, I'm going to be exposed 10%, 5%, 1%, whatever I showed you here with the stop loss. This is super simple. Again, this is recorded, guys. This webinar is, all, all the webinar is recorded. You can see it again as many times as you want in our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, how much time? Okay, so we are moving. Do we have any questions, guys, about that, about that bit? I'm sorry, I nearly... I nearly skipped away. Do we have any questions about that? Any, any, any questions, guys?
So what do I recommend? Well, well, I, I again, that depends. Look here, you're asking me what I recommend, but I wrote here to you, not just to you, I wrote here for everyone that I can't recommend a random amount without those parameters. I need to know which asset, what load size, how many positions, diversification, okay? All of those things, they need needs to be considered. When I have all of those things, I can say an estimated recommended amount. All right, let's get that question and just paste it down here. How much time is required to make profits with trading? How much time? Uh, let's just try to under, I think this question is referring to, let's try and break it down, okay? Let's break it down. In trading, we have the analysis, right? We have the trading, maybe I'll put it at the top, trading plan. Okay, we have the analysis, we have execution, uh, what else? We have planning orders that can save us the time, and I'm going to include everything together. So let's think about it for a moment. To make profit, I can do it in 10 seconds, right? Let me show you how quickly that can happen. Uh, let's pick something interesting. I really want to show you something that we don't typically visit every way. Well, let's see how Wheat is doing. It seems like we've played with that before. Okay. So just to understand how easy to make profit is, okay? Again, I, I'm maybe there is a bit of being a little sarcastic with what I'm saying, but it's it's the honest truth, okay? I can just put here 0.01. I can click here buy, and if it goes up to 562, so this is the current price. We're gonna go. Uh, let's just go ten dollars higher. Okay, okay, if I click buy and it gets to the red line, sorry, to the green line, I'm gonna make approximately $10. To be honest, guys, as long as it gets to the green rectangle and above that, of course, <clears throat> I'll be making profits. So why there is a question like that, how much time is required to make profits with trading? Okay, if this is so simple, why why do I need more time? Or I should ask, what do I need more time for? Because from my point of view, this is super simple. I can click here, buy. If it goes up, I make profits, right? You can also lose. Thank you, Max. So I can also lose. Listen, here, this question, I guess it's referred to the time invested in trading in general. Okay, that means there's time to analyze, the time to execute, the time to assess the risk money management, the time to, um, to do all of that, right? And the time to do, we have a question here. Okay. I am not, uh, Nanette, you asked here a question that I'm not sure that I understood. Are you not sending daily confirmation? haven't received mine since I started trading. What what haven't you received, Nanette? I'm trying to understand. If you could help me and elaborate, I'd really appreciate it. 
because I do want to help you. Daily confirmation. You mean analysis signals? What what uh, confirmation? Maybe you mean verification. Is that is that what you mean? Verification for the account or confirmation? Because we don't send confirmation every day. I'm I'm really trying to understand what you're referring to. If you can explain it to me, I'd highly uh, I'm more than happy to help. But I'm just going to carry on for the question to finish that bit. Um, so thank you. Daily confirmation report of traders. I don't think that we do that occasionally. I think that you need to ask that to happen. Uh, I, I don't think that we do that automatically. Okay, but you can. Just contact your account manager. I think contact your account manager, that will be the easiest. He can check your file and he can give you uh, much more thorough uh, assistance. Okay, so as I was explaining, they require time to, it's not just to make profits, it's to trade properly. Just to trade properly, I think that those things, trading plan analysis, execution, and pending orders needs to be stringed together. And this is why, for instance, if right now I'm buying and it goes against me, this is a record of trading transaction made during the day. Yeah, of course, of course. If you are looking to export a report from MT4 or MT5, you can just get on the platform or ask your account manager and you can ex export that by yourself with three clicks, three clicks away. This is why, Nanette, I suggest you'll contact your senior account manager and he will maybe do it with you and maybe teach you how to do it as well. Okay, okay, that's a good feedback. It's a very good feedback. I, I really appreciate it. Okay, so as I was about to say with, with, with this question, okay, so how much time is required? As I showed here, just to take the buy here, it's very, very simple, but of course there is no guarantee for that to happen and it can turn around and we will have losses instead of profits. This is why a trading plan is extremely, extremely handy. Okay, and if I design my time in a way that makes sense, let's suppose I work during the week and I'm super busy during the week, I won't be able to spend a uh, few hours a day. I can just dedicate a, a specific time and day that I know that I'm going to do the analysis and I'm going to do the pending order and I'm going to do the risk, risk money management. And maybe I don't do the execution in the same session. I don't have to. I can, but I don't have to. You should also know, guys, that a smart trader knows when to trade, but also knows when not to trade. Okay, keep that in mind. So this is also something that your senior account manager can be very handy with. Uh, trading plan to dedicate a specific time to do the analysis, pending order, risk money management, and then the execution. It can also happen in the same session, people scalping, making a lot of money doing that, but that's also time depending. So to get this straight with how much time is required to make profits with trading, I would recommend to obviously go through those. Trading plan, analysis, pending order, risk money management and execution. I would add here the topic of education and the umbrella of everything that it's underneath in terms of strategies, um, indicators really everything can go there but that's as an addition this is really really the core the basics that i would recommend and afterwards it's just to go vertically and keep keep uh, evolving okay let's put that down put it down just a second how are we going to, to place it? Let's do it this way.
again, guys, this could all happen in the same session, but sometimes it's also helpful to do it separately with regards to time. Okay. All right, so we have a fabulous question here from Joe. Uh, we are going to share with you some links here and then I'm gonna go through your question, Joe. Let's take that and paste it for you guys in the chat. Please tell me that you are receiving those links. As I always say, I have no indication if you're receiving it or not. Just pasting it in the chat, okay? But I hope you do. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> now I know that at least one person received it. I hope that the rest received it as well. So let's just go through what we have here. This is for additional education. Uh, thank you, George. Login, deposit, FEC and health center. We have the, uh, to open a real account and the academy, but I'm also gonna show you here a nice way to get to the videos without using the links here as you are here on the web trader okay so that is found on this icon uh, just before the the chat okay i can click here on tutorials and i have very very generous uh amount of videos to watch all kind of tutorials and really just amazing amazing just to go through that look how much content okay and as an addition if i go here to the academy it's going to take me to that page it's less relevant right now uh and yeah okay let's just go through the last question that we had what causes trends to tip and rally is it the system or traders when they realize then as this either both both <laughs> who asked me that question joe right joe you asked me that question what makes the market uh dip and rally Let's look at uh, NVIDIA. Let me see if I have NVIDIA in here. Just a second, guys. Okay, I hope this is here. Okay, now we, oh, my screen, my screen is not showing screen is not showing well uh okay oh my screen my screen just got blanked i don't really know oh now it's showing well i hope that now it's showing for you guys as well Okay, so this is who knows what 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 am I showing you guys? Who can tell me what am I showing you guys? Who knows what's that? What is Nvidia? Anybody knows Nvidia? So Nvidia is one of the most beside AMD. I think it's the biggest, probably graphic hardware corporation in the world. They also associate with Intel. I don't know if still the cooperation is up to that level, but Nvidia is about to split their shares. Okay, that means that now we can expect the market to fluctuate aggressively. Okay, and that's the question here from Joe. What 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 makes trends like dip and rally? Well, exactly those kind of things, right? And as an addition, what happened with the gold? Just, uh, I think two months ago, or how long has passed? Yeah, 
So you see, the thing is that almost every fundamental impact high occurrence, like the NFP tomorrow, like NVIDIA, which I showed, like here with the gold, we understand that this is an obvious comparison to the US economy. Uh, what's happening with gold, all the all times high, right? Yeah, we understand that, look where it's been before. It's already passed previous segments by more than 10% already. That's just insane. All right, uh, so guys, it's been a pleasure, unfortunately, or out of time. I really hope that you could learn something from me today. Uh, and of course, you can see the recorded version as I have explained, you can just go to YouTube. Don't be shy, you can watch this webinar as many times as you want. I understand that sometimes I explain things a bit swiftly, but you have to understand that that's the nature of the webinar and I have to uh, cover as many subjects as I can and to give you as much as content as I can. And that's it, so I wish you all best of luck. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you for helping with and being such a, an amazing audience. And I'll see you next week. So by then, have a fruitful week and have a good day.